Hey you fluffer schnoots. So in this video, I just wanna show how easy it is to get set up with your discrete NVIDIA card if you have a laptop or some other system with Intel or AMD integrated graphics and you want to specifically use your NVIDIA card for games and things like that. This particular method is especially useful if you want to use your AMD card for all of the, I guess, like menial or basic stuff and use your NVIDIA card for gaming and things because of course the NVIDIA card is gonna be more power intensive and more performance, but the, the important thing is that it'll eat your battery, so you don't want to use it all the time. And there's a few different ways of doing it, but let me show you the wrong way first, because this actually threw me through a loop when I first started getting all of this set up. So you might be familiar with Bumblebee. Bumblebee is not what you want to use, and if you have Bumblebee installed, you want to purge it. Now this is on Debian testing, so it might be called something different in your repos. It's Bumblebee, so actually it probably won't be, but there's also Primus and Optimus. Yeah, anyway, you don't want that either. So if you have Primus or Optimus or whatever it's called, you want to get rid of that because Bumblebee and Primus will conflict with the proper method, and that is using environment variables. Now I guess a caveat to this is these environment variables only work with quote unquote newer cards. But if you look at the supported cards, I mean, it's not actually newer. It's like, I guess, modern within the past few years or something. But unless you're running like really old hardware, you're, you're gonna wanna use the environment variable method. And the way you do that is if you're launching a game through Steam or whatever, you go to the game that you wanna launch with your discrete card. So Arc is a great example. In fact, it like this game won't even run on the integrated graphics. It just doesn't work. So if I wanna play Arc with NVIDIA, I go to properties and add the environment variables here in the launch options. And I think everybody knows what the launch options in Steam are, so I'm not really gonna explain this, but NV Prime Render Offload is one and GLX vendor library name is NVIDIA. And then of course the command thing goes after it. Now you could probably launch Steam, just like actually launch Steam with these environment variables set so that everything that you launch through Steam automatically picks them up. I'm not doing that here and I've never tested it. So maybe that doesn't work, but that actually seems like a more sane way of doing this. Sometimes when I stream games through Discord and I don't have these environment variables set, after a few minutes the game will start to lag and the audio will glitch and it's really bad. So for me, I have to use this if I want to stream through Discord or something like that. But yeah, this is the Steam method and I also have Lutris here. So if I want to play one of these games through my NVIDIA card and it's on Lutris, you can configure it at the game level. So like Overwatch 2, for example, uh, it's under runner options, right? Or no, it's actually under system options. Yeah, enable NVIDIA prime render offload. So by switching this on, it'll make it so Overwatch starts with my NVIDIA card, which is pretty handy and I don't have to screw around with environment variables and things. For all intents and purposes, that's how this is being bootstrapped is it's plugging into the environment variables and launching it that way. But it's nice that you don't have to like go to each game and do that. And then once you're in the game, the way that you can know if you're using the right graphics card, I guess it depends on the game, but for Overwatch, it'll say right here, NVIDIA GeForce GTX. If I had Mango HUD running, you could see the, the render on the top left too, but I guess I don't have it running here. And there's not really a great way of knowing whether or not a application is using the correct graphics device. So I use NVTOP for that if I, if I really need to know. I actually rarely use this tool, but for demonstration, it's actually really handy. So at the top, you see that device zero is AMD graphics and device one is my NVIDIA card. So you look at the little process tree on the bottom, which I don't see a way to resize, but um, I guess I can zoom in for you and go to the bottom of the stack. And we'll see that Overwatch here is running with device one, which is NVIDIA and it's using compute, or I guess the type is compute or whatever. This is, uh, NVTOP is actually a really cool tool and it's it's rad that it's NVTOP, so NVIDIA top, but it also picks up stats for the AMD card as well. I assume that it works with NVIDIA too, but I think that's pretty neat. Some games like No Man's Sky actually allow you to select the GPU in the game and it, it, it lets me select LVM pipe too, which is really funny and weird. I don't think it would even work with that. But if you wanted, or if you launched it with your AMD card, for example, you could switch to your NVIDIA card and it would save it. So that's really cool. And I actually have Mango HUD set up, but it looks like the default Mango HUD just tells you the renderer and a Vulkan could be AMD or, or NVIDIA. So that doesn't really tell us anything. But it is really cool that 
it, it's gotten to the point where it's so it's so simple to switch between the two the two renders or any render I guess if you had like five or six different cards that you could probably switch between all of them if you used uh, NVIDIA with the uh, environment variables. But I just kind of wanted to make this video for you guys because when I when I first got set up with this laptop, I had a really difficult time getting NVIDIA working because most of the documentation talked about Bumblebee or Optimus or Primus or, or whatever. But it really just ended up being simply those environment variables and that was it. But I guess the tricky part was that once I had Bumblebee installed, I had to remove it and reboot. So it was a bit of a process and, and hopefully this helps you or or whatever, but that's that's it. Now I'm gonna land on this overgrown planet on No Man's Sky. It's a game I really, really like and I haven't played in quite a while. And wrap this video up. I hope that you liked this video and if you did, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz. I appreciate all your support. And, oh no, you can't see my freighter. It's up there though. <laughs> Thanks for watching.